Billiards.com.au, more than just billiards. Come to our online store for great value. Hi, my name's Edward Charles. We get a lot of inquiries on different aspects around the billiard table. And for all the mums and dads out there that own a pool table, one of those inquiries is to do with putting a new tip on it here. Now, I've brought along a couple of things here today to show you. Now, there are various types of cues uh, for the different games that are played. So, some of the pool games that are played around the world, uh, the shafts on the cues are much thicker, a lot more flexible, um, compared to the, the cues that we often associate with the games of snooker and, and some of the pool games played with that. Now the two types of shafts vary. One, as I said, is very flexible. The snooker type shaft, on the other hand, is quite rigid. Now the tips that are recommended for those do vary as well. So all you've got to say is I've got a snooker cue. What tip's best recommended for that? Well, it's going to be one of the, uh, of the blue tips like these. You'll often find them. They're either blue elk, blue diamond. Uh, they're made from a, an elk hide, for example. And they're firm, but they've got a little bit of uh, softness about them. The other tips for the pool cues with a more flexible shaft is quite a heavy and hard leather. So keep that in mind when you're looking to purchase the tip. Right, well, this is just some of the equipment that you're going to need, of which some of it you'll find uh, even around your own home. Now, obviously, I wouldn't suggest that you do the uh, tip maintenance on your own billiard table, that's for sure. Do something, some of it on your kitchen bench top or somewhere like that. Now, one of the things that we need to be able to do is to select the right tip to play with. 99 out of 100 of the tips you find for the, the very hard ones for the pool cues are all going to be okay. But when it comes to the, uh, the other tips, which are say the blue ones, then you'll find that there might be variances in their firmness. Best way to put it. You don't want a real hard one, you definitely don't want a real soft one. Best way to select it, uh, you can find by looking at it. This tip uh, came, or the suggestion came from, uh, was made to me when I was much younger by my father, the late Eddie Charlton, who was world match play snooker champion. He said the best way to select a tip, have a look on the edge. If there's a bit of shininess to it, that's going to help with the rigidity of the side. The other way is just to drive your thumbnail into the side of the tip. If it leaves a deep mark, then that tip might be too soft. If it leaves a hardly a mark at all, then it's probably quite firm and will be good enough to play on. Now, the other little bits of equipment you're going to need, small cutting board to help trim the tip off when we're ready, uh, a nice very sharp bladed knife, just get uh, mum's nail file, she should be tickle pink when you do that, that's why we've got a pink one, and any good uh, Q-tip cement would do the job. I often and would suggest people use the super tight glues, they do bond a bit faster. The gel one is probably a bit better for home use because if you're not quick enough to get it on, the other ones bond a bit quick. You need to get the tip on nice and straight. All right, well, now what we're going to do is to show you how to bond a new tip onto the clue. What you're going to find though on most occasions is either the tip is worn out and you need to cut it off, or there is some remnants of the tip left on the end of the shaft that's come either because the tip has, has been forced off in some form. So what you need to do, again, grab your very sharp knife, uh, and just slice gently away at the old leather that's on the end of the cue, being careful, one, not to cut your finger, two, not to uh, damage the end of the cue too much. Now, as you can see, that's come away quite good. There's the last bits of the uh, old glue that's on there. You need a good, clean surface, normal gluing practices. So just give that a bit of a scrape across the, the top of the shaft there, and that takes away all of the old glue. Now, from there, my suggestion would be is you just use the tip of the blade and just put a nice little cross, just cut a nice little cross, not too deep, not too silly, and only in the timber, across that. I'm going to do the same to the bottom of the tip in a minute, and the reason for it, it just allows the, the glue to go a little bit deeper into both the two halves of... Right, now with the, um, the blue sort of tips, they are got a slight powder coating. Now, my suggestion would be that we give the bottom of the tip uh, a little sanding. Now, two reasons for that. One, it has that little fine powder on it, but also it, they may not be perfectly flat. So using our little nail file, you just put it on there and just slide it backwards and forwards a few times, just gently turning it round just to try and make that even, and you'll start to see it cutting away where it's starting to get rid of that little coating it may have and flattening it down. So we just keep doing that until we're satisfied that it's becoming more flat. And of course, naturally, it will clean that bottom of that so that uh, the, the glue can get a better bite onto the, onto the leather. You don't have to rush this. This is 
something that only takes a few minutes overall to do, but you don't want to rush through it because if you don't get a good bond, you're liable to be playing a very important shot one day against uh, some other member of your family and find yourself uh, with your tip flying off. Besides them laughing, uh, they may also win the game on you. Right, now there we go. Now that's, that's pretty good there. Right, so what we need to do now we go back and we just put a little score mark across the face of that, going very carefully. All right. Now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of the glue to the end of the cube. Now you don't need a lot. These super tight glues, as you know, is only a little dab will do you, as they used to say. So you just put a little bit on the end of the cube. And then what I suggest we do after that is that we'll just put the, end of the, we'll put the tip onto the end of the cube. And I actually use the, the tip to spread that a little bit, and it also puts it then onto the end of the tip. Now when the tips are very close to the correct size, you need to marry them up as best as you can. You don't want them obviously to be lopsided. Uh, the gel type super glues are a little bit better for home use because of the fact that um, they just take a little bit longer to bond where you, it gives you a chance to move the tip if you find it hasn't gone on properly. Now once you're satisfied that that's reasonably centered, it may overhang a fraction, but we're gonna fix it up in a minute. Just give a couple of little pushes with your finger if you've got a small little hammer of sorts you can give it a tap because what you want to do is knock any excess air out uh, that may have got underneath because you don't want a bubble of air once it dries because that could be one of the reasons why a tip can come off if it hasn't bonded flat. Uh, but if you give it a couple of pushes you find that that may force any air out. Now even though these types of glues dry very quickly they don't necessarily dry rock hard. They bond fast but they don't necessarily dry fast. So my suggestion to these again is if you're going to use your cue tomorrow, tip it the night before, put the new tip on, let it dry overnight, then you can come to the next section we're going to show in a minute as how to trim it and dress the tip up ready for play. Well now what we're going to do is we're going to trim the excess tip from uh, the end of the cue away, then dress it up ready for play. Now my suggestion again would be just get a little cutting board or something on your kitchen bench that you can force it down. Because as you can imagine, if you're holding it in the air and trying to cut down, you're going to force the tip off, no matter how well it's bonded. So you just put it on the end of a cutting board. Just use the sharp bladed section, using the ferrule on the cue as a guide, and just take your time and saw through the excess tip that's there. Certainly not difficult. And you're getting it using the ferrule, you're actually getting it reasonably flush. Now, if the tip is much larger than the end of the cue, you're going to find it a little bit more difficult, but certainly not impossible. So you always try and get a tip that's very close to the correct size. It just makes this little part of the job so much easier. Just work your way around, taking your time. Again, you've got, I won't say you've got all day to do this, but you do have as much time as you wish. Now, once you've got yourself all the way around, what you can do is you can just Get the edge of the blade, just go around the edge if you wish. Take any excess bumps and bruises away from it. And then it's almost ready to go. Now from that point, go back to your little nail file. And what you want to do is take the sharp edge that you've created on the top of the cue. You do not want that to be, um, the top of the cue to be flat. It has a slight dome to it anyway. So all you're going to do is just bring the, the, the nail file down from the tip towards the shaft. You can imagine if you go up on a, on a product which is made of leather, you're going to actually force the fibres of the tip apart. You don't want to do that. So you just keep going down, working your way around, turning the cue slowly, and that's going to get that excess bit of leather away. And then that's almost ready to go. Now it's you want the walls on the tip to stay. The old adage that I heard many years ago that you want to dome the tip from ferrule across to ferrule is not really accurate. You're taking the bulk of your tip away doing that for a start. Um, not that they're expensive, but you don't want to be wasting them. But you need the walls on the tip. That's what's giving your tip strength. When you hit the ball, uh, you can imagine that there's a bit of compression happens. So with a good firm tip, uh, you're going to er eradicate that spongy type of effect. So just taking that over, then just to finish off, just go across the top a little bit, get to break up that pre-chalking effect, and finish off coming around the edges. And there we go, we've got one very well shaped cue, 
or tip I should say, uh, ready to start your, your first match today.